All right, traders, welcome to today's end of day recap. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group. And today is Wednesday, September 20th, Fed Day. And, um, you know, certainly uh, some things to talk about with the Fed. Um, and, um, you know, a lot of reversals, uh, basically, that I see on my charts. And um, some areas beginning to kind of break down and um, lean lower and kind of, go, you know, move to that direction um, from possibly sideways to maybe to the um, to more to the downside. The other thing um, to remember here is, and again, sound like a broken record with some of these things, but um, this is what September seasonality is like, particularly um, we're in that middle uh, ground between the two uh, Jewish holidays, Rosh, you know, the, the old Wall Street saying is sell Rosh Hashanah by Yom Kippur, right? Well, Yom Kippur is not till the 24th and 25th. Um, I'm sorry if I'm getting one of those dates wrong. It might be the 24th. I have to double check that. But regardless of the day, I mean, these things are not exact. Like, I'm not going to start. I'm not going to go out and just start buying um, on the 25th. I'm going to wait and see um, what type of price action and um, whether some things um, – like breath improve. Um, the Fed days are always tricky. Um, one of the things that we noticed in the beginning of the day was that um, breath was strong and breath op actually opened up partic particularly strong. But you just know in the back of your mind that that when you've got, uh, you know, on a Fed day and, and um, a press conference, that um, things can change and things can change kind of rapidly. And that's what they did uh, basically uh, in the last hour of the day. And things were actually holding in there, you know, there was the initial reaction, which at two o'clock, right, when um, the initial notes or summary comes out, headlines from the Fed, right, we started to move down. And then um, we actually rebounded. And we're just kind of hanging in there for about, um, I think, maybe maybe about 15, 20 minutes into um, uh, Powell's press conference. And then we started to kind of lean lower. And it just looked like the market um, was kind of just, just losing out on um on the speech that he gave so um i don't think that there's really that much that we learned um in regards to what powell said you know in in regards to what i anticipated anyway maybe the market was had a little bit different expectations but um in in our weekend video i, I just said that i didn't think that we were going to hear maybe anything new or, or maybe positive from powell how could he you know we just got last week's data that came out um inflation data remember kind of going back to um, what we the economics from last week was the CPI and the PPI report were hotter than expected. So the, the inflation is not, um, you know, and, and there lies the major problem is that the inflation is not going away. And um, so they're kind of in a corner in terms of you know, I, I, from what I gathered is, you know, Powell wants to wants to wait a little bit because um, the inflation hikes that they've already done have a lagging effect and they're starting to work their way through the economy so they kind of have to wait and see but you know if we get another hotter than expected um inflation report they stand ready to do more um so of course no fed hike today right which was 100 percent um i know some people on twitter which are kind of odd or contrarian and thinking that there was going to be a surprise hike today uh, you just have to kind of shake your head at that at that kind of nonsense but um so you know this we're still the the um pricing for november has not moved but um we're going to get a lot more data and you kind of have to get a little bit fearful about what the next uh, inflation report is going to show. 31% um, chance is what the odds are for um, a November hike. Again, that hasn't moved. That's been, that's right around where it's been. Um, the number for December did move up a little bit, right? There's now a 50% chance that we're going to see one more uh, rate hike by the end of this year. And then of course, this type of thing, right? Which is something that we've been seeing now multiple times over the last year is the whenever the market started a, has started a price in fed cuts it is not it is moved um once powell gets on stage and starts speaking though that possibility of fed cuts that you're seeing for next year that probability has changed so if you look um the first time that you actually see a probability you know this is going out to july um prior to uh, what we're looking at right now, you know, yesterday, they were pricing that out a little bit sooner. So that gets, again, pushed, pushed back. And one of the things like I, I don't want to, you know, I try to separate politics from trading in the markets, but, you know, you have to kind of think about some of this analysis and what you're doing. And, and 
one of the things that you have to think about too is the end game of all this. If inflation is going to be stubborn, right? The the what I come back to is you know what we're talking about with Powell and the Fed. That's monetary policy, right? That they control the interest rates. Well, fiscally. They control tax rates and, you know, some stimulus that they can put together, you know, so I don't think that the Fed and the presidential administration are on the same page. And that's part of the problem. You know, I mean, if you're going to continue to roll out more stimulus um, and that's something that, uh, you know, we're going to be into an election year soon, right? They're not, the administration is not as going to try to prevent that at all costs, uh, meaning like a hard landing, like recession. So, you know, we just heard the other day that that um, the national debt is at at thirty three trillion dollars. And I think the last trillion happened over the last three months. So, I mean, it's going to be very difficult for this. Of Like, I'm doubting whether this inflation um, is really going to move much because you're just going to have that backstop of that they're not on the same page. Like, when have you heard, by the way, uh, and then I'll, I'll go on to the to the market, but when's the last time that you heard that that the Powell, that Powell and um, Biden have spent some time together? Um, I don't think that, the, I certainly haven't had, heard that, um, you know, and I think that they should be meeting. I think that the Fed chair and the, and the president um, should be meeting. We've heard a lot from, uh, we've heard a lot from, uh, from uh sorry uh yellen who's now in treasury but um i don't even think that they're on the same page either so you know she was she was stating things like a little bit different like it's almost it's almost as if none of these people are talking to one another so it's an interesting quandary all right so let's get so that's my little interjection of you know uh which i normally do on a fed day and um how difficult this is to, to be bringing that you know to be bringing down um inflation because you've got all these different uh different views and nobody seems to be talking to, to one another um some of the, the key parties in our country um so where so what um did we see in terms of the price action well it's kind of interesting um because um yesterday and it, you know in, in my video to members, um, you know, I mentioned that even though we had a, you know, type of uh, a nice move off the lows and we we held the bottom of value, I didn't really think that there was much um, celebration in that because, uh, you know, the price remain, remained below all the short-term moving averages and we haven't reclaimed anything. So now we've broken 4467. And I think now you have to think about, um, you know, now that we're, we've been sideways for the whole month, uh, we could be starting to kind of move now to the downside, considering that break of value. So 4467 um, is a, is a no, no for me in terms of price action going below that, that area. And um, that's a place where I generally, you know, reduce risk. Um, sometimes I fight with the price action a little bit when we're going sideways and I do look for outperformers, but I don't particularly like when we start moving down that that's the line in the sand for me. Um, so I do have a hedge on, um, and uh, I kept that on, uh, you know, I took it, th I took one target, I think, and um, I have SQQQ on, and we'll stay that way, and I'll get to the cues in just a second, right? That's triple inverse um, the cues. But notice the one thing that I wanted to point out to you here on the one hour chart is just notice that, um, you know, we struggled with this, and this was actually earlier this morning, and I kept posting this uh, in, in in my trading room, you know, just talking about, hey, you know, <laughs> you can't get, like, excited about this price action because we haven't been able to turn the corner, right? And again, the valuers are telling you a lot, right? So again, this is volume at price, and it's telling you that price was not strong enough to start to kind of move back to the upside. In fact, there's, there's, no, there's no, like... Um, interpretation at, at all like there, there's no way that you can misinterpret that by looking at um the screen that i have in front of you four four five oh eight we try to get there or you know earlier in the week except for this right except for for monday earlier in the week where we kind of just sneaked into the value area for about an hour and then fell back again this is a one hour chart uh, the other day this was tuesday this is a this is a failure obviously in the morning and then again another failure today so again you know 
the, the support resistance levels are working great. Whether or not you're clicking the mouse on these on these levels is is a whole nother story. But um, that's always the situation. And um, but but the technicals that we're providing are are very good. Um, and by the way, before I move to the to the queues, but you know we slice right through this version point of control. Now we could come back, um, but for now we're under that version point of control. And if we come back, right? So th this is this um, is a short term version point of control from a few weeks ago, right? And um, we did not stop at that. So no confirmation of buyers coming back in. Now the queues we're going to get to. Um, this is still 80% rule. So see on the top left of your screen, 80% rule, meaning once you break into the value area from either starting the period above or below, whichever it matters, uh, you know, whichever, it doesn't matter what direction. Um, we started uh, the period above value, the, the month above value, we broke into it um, and the 80% rule is in play. And um, and that's something that you've heard me quote. If you look at my Substack, um, which I write every morning, um, you could see me post exactly that eighty percent bearish rule um, the last couple of days, and um, that levels three sixty two seventy seven. Now, when we get down there, right? Always when you get to a support level, the important thing to do is let's see if buyers come in and support that that um, that level. It's never as soon as we touch there, I'm going to start buying. You want to wait for some confirmation, just like we talked about um, with the S and P chart. Now, also we are, there's a, so there's a couple things that are coming into play here on multiple time frames around the similar amount. Now this level is right around 364. Again, virgin point of control, an area where there's a high amount of volume where we might see some buyers come in, right? And you could see a couple of the other ones on the screen, right? For the queues, like this one worked perfectly, right? Um, this was supported. We came down in here and, and um, um, right away we reversed. So that's kind of, that's what we want to see for tomorrow. Um, and same thing here on the upside, right? There was one that we got through. The second one, we basically touched this and started to move. So, you know, Right now, we're not seeing, you know, go back to the S&P for a minute. <laughs> right now, that's, price didn't do that. And by the way, here's one to the upside here too. So in any event, um, that's what we see for the for the queues. So the so the queues, um, you know, and it, and that could go a little further, considering that the bottom of value is uh, three sixty two seventy seven. All right, so there are some levels for you, and then um, you know, the, I don't know if you call it the good, the bad, and then there's the ugly. Um, IWM did decisively break again. IWM really tricky because if you're on the wrong side of some of these moves, because IWM was outperforming this morning, and that was responsible for the breath that we saw which i'll just bring up here on the five minute chart so you that so that you could see this but um here was the breath right strong to start the day and it, and you could see it really flipped there um in the last uh hour of the session now it had been going down and um and waning but it really moved down so yeah i mean this is uh you know if you look at this on on the weekly chart this does not look good um in terms of where you know there's a decent distance before you get to support right here is your rejection of course at the top of value still very sideways on the weekly chart but there's the break of the 200 day moving average and i think um if you're looking for a downside area of where iwm could get down to i kind of like the 174 78 um, level um, and that's a version point of control um down here so um, that's something to shoot for. Um, if you're doing some shorting, um, I think IWM is um, the way that I would look at it. I've said this now for a couple of weeks too. I actually, and this was in my sub stack, I think last week, I said, hey, if you're looking for a short idea, watch that break of the um, of the value area. Um, and that's a nice slice um, in, into that. Um, you know, what else to kind of look at for now? Um, you know, the, oh, um, here's the two other, the, the macro indicators, right? These are important for today. Um, big flip in the dollar. Um, the dollar this morning was down about a third of a percent um, and closed up on the day. So it's very close to taking out the highs here. I'm just using the UUP. This is the, the, um, the ETF for the dollar, but you could use dollar futures or whatever you choose to. But, um, you know, that's a reversal back to the highs. Um, it's not officially like broken through there, but I would be mindful of that. Um, and then the other pro big problem area is bonds, 
right? And if you look at what where bonds are, that's another reversal. Um, and bonds actually ended up lower, meaning interest rates went up. And here's what bond prices look like. Uh, I'm sorry, um, that's but bond prices are here. Um, bond prices are here. Yields are here. Some people like to look at these things in, in terms of yields. They like to know where the where the actual rate is. You can see the two years is 5.2% right now. So that's a big move. Um, you know, I've heard, oh my God, what if the 10 year gets, gets to 5%? Well, the two years already, <laughs> the two years like, Hey, hold my beer. Um, because that's at five point five point one seven percent So that's already there. So if you're worried about the, the 10 year getting to five year, um, I, I, you know, I know that the 10 year is significant, but, um, the two years already blown past it. Uh, so, you know, and the, right now the 10 years at 4.4%. All right. So these are kind of coupled with, um, let me go back to my spreadsheet over here, right? There's not a lot of in between here, right? The, the yields going higher, the dollar going higher and small caps breaking support. Um, I gave you some levels to watch in the queues. Um, we could certainly look at some of these other areas, but um, the semis, right? So it's it's very much like the word that comes into mind here is defensive. Um, SMH is very close to breaking the August lows. Um, it's right right around that area. Um, again, it doesn't have nothing's put like you don't have to be perfect with these with these levels, right? You're gonna like if you're looking for a short, you know, it, you know, you're probably looking for for more of a move than than whether or not it just held basically there. Um, but the 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 semis at some at one point this year were showing leadership, right? You know, the lower high was not a good thing. Um, same thing, same very similar looking chart there in the home builders, and they look vulnerable to um, a move lower. Seventy nine eleven. All right, crude, um, which I also wanted to cover too. Um, crude at one point, you know, there was inventories today, and right around like uh, after the inventory numbers, crude peaked for the day, had a nice bounce to it. But um, you could see, and by the way, look at the volume. By the way, in crude futures, so it does look like that's a change of direction in the short term, and we'll see where that comes. So you know, I've mentioned, um, you know, I've spent some time talking about how energy stocks were not really giving that love and feeling when crude was going higher. They just they were massively underperforming on that last leg higher in crude. So perhaps that was telling. Sometimes you need a little bit of time before um, you can kind of see what's going on there. But um, the fact that energy stocks stopped going up um, should tell you something. And and look at OIH yesterday. Um, so you know again this is starting to 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 move lower. Um, what else do I want to talk about? You know, one thing that was kind of strong today was the was some of the um, managed care names. Again, this is just a more people like running for the hills. I think a little bit this IH ETF, right? Um, look at the thin value area. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Look at how thin this value area is in the managed care space. So this could continue to to outperform a little bit. Um, this has kind of been a beaten up area. Um, you could trade this versus. 247. And of course, you could pick out names like UNH, you know, UNH going back to this chart, I would watch to see what it does at this 490 level, and possibly being long uh, managed care names here as more of a defensive play. Um, another darling uh, got beaten up today. Um, this is Celsius. Um, remember what I said last week, Speaking of the uh, thin one hour value areas, I said a big move was coming, right? And I always, um, I get questions from people whenever I see, whenever there's a stock down, right? I, you know, people will ask, well, what's the news on the stock? I didn't see any news on the stock. It's just the way, and the reason why I'm going over this, because you will learn over time as a trader that you don't need news a lot of times. You need to follow price action and understand um, if you're seeing something in the technicals, because this was super, this value area is one of the thinnest value areas I've seen um, on the one hour chart. And usually that means a big move is coming. There's a thin one back here. Notice we had a big move to the upside. So I was looking for a move up, to, you know, for the upside too in this name. And you could see, by the way, last week, 
that there was sellers in this thing preventing this from taking that next leg higher above last week's value area. So that was a little a little bit of a hint that something wasn't right. And then the breakdown comes and um, look at the volume today in Celsius. So again, I, I didn't see any news on the stock. It's just the fact that you've got sellers and buyers in the stock market every day. And those aggressive buyers or aggressive sellers are actually the news that you wanna be looking out for, right? Who's buying and who's selling. All right, so that's a decent breakdown there. Um, a couple names on my radar, um, to, just to kind of finish the day. Um, really nice uh, relative strength in Akamai. So again, you know, why is this? Why was this stock up so much today? I'd have to say because there's some aggressive buyers in there, um, and that's pretty good. And um, I did take some targets in this today. Uh, here's my trading blotter. Um, you know, I, I was very, <laughs> you know, it's funny because when the market's acting really well, right, and really strong, and the breath is really strong, um, which I will go over that chart too. I'm not taking a dollar target here and there. Right? I took three targets. I got in at 105, right? That's just the market that we're in. We're seeing too many reversals on breakouts to not go ahead and, and you know, seize, a, um, you know, go after a winner. Um, I had to take off Google today, just too weak. Um, that's a name that I've been in um, for probably a good three weeks or so, uh, but it's just too weak. And it was actually, there was relative weakness in there today. Um, I did start a trade in Splunk today. It was looking good. Uh, but that's kind of succumbed to everything else. Still hanging in there, but didn't get above its five-day moving average. So for now, it just remains um, a starter for me. Um, I mentioned breath, right? So I mean, I, you know, again, like just like yesterday's video um, for members, I was pretty negative. And again, you just have to be negative too with this price action until we're seeing breath improve. Uh, but this is not updated for today, but this is telling you too, this is the, the McClellan summation index, right? It's also telling you, especially on the NASDAQ side, um, it just shows you that more names are going down versus up. Um, and you just have to be defensive while this goes on. All right, guys, uh, that is it. So that's the word of the day is defensive and, um, you know, patience until the seasonality gets better. And then, of course, once the seasonality does improve, we want to look for the confirmations. All right, guys, have a great night. See you tomorrow.